Because that's what's happening to you. You, you, you. you becoming a blob, so you outsource your masculinity. You watch Jason do all this stuff. Go on, Jason, break his other collarbone. I got a parking ticket this morning. And <laughs> you see, he's such a man. Even his lunch sweats. He... <laughs> Most men are what nerveless bags of glands, you know, people who... He, Jason makes decisions. M men, most men, me, most men, get polaxed by indecision just walking into pressure motion. <laughs> Not Jason, he pulls the whole fucking circuit board out. That's how much of a man he is, you see? Most men are ambiguous creatures. You can imagine another life for yourself. You could have become a... a library glue wholesaler in Worthing. You might have been um, a, 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 a bicycle customizer in the Isle of Wight. You might have been somebody who repaired lighthouses in Cornwall and fallen in love with the local uh, fruit seller in midlife, realized you were gay, <laughs> and he had been nursing a crush on you for all these years because you'd been going in and out of there buying yams. And then you moved to Andalusia and opened your own small B&B &B with an incredible range of sherries. It could happen, you know? But not to Jason! <laughs> Jason could never make love with another man. Never! Not unless that man contained information <laughs> that could only be released through the enzymes in spam. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I can remember when homosexuality was still an issue, and it still is to a degree because the Anglican Church is saying, yes, you can have gay bishops, but they have to be celibate. Which kind of defies the point of having a gay bishop, doesn't it? <laughs> What's the point of being a gay bishop unless you can say, nice to be here, this is my friend Jeff. You know. <laughs> and the truth is that straight culture has a lot to learn from gay people. Now, I'm talking about men. I'm not talking about women. That's just jolly japes. And the, <laughs> we'd all do that if we were girls. That is the mainstream view. <laughs> but there's a lot of honesty in that culture uh, that we don't have. As, as uh, uh, we, I say we, I mean me, obviously, and other straight people. Uh, because, you know, I saw an ad in uh, a magazine in America. It was men looking for men. And I was very impressed, I didn't understand all of it, but I was very impressed by the honesty. Because it said, brown slash green, okay. <laughs> um, hairy and versatile, which is good. There's no point being hairy unless you can turn a few tricks. <laughs> mainly top, mainly, but will do most things. And people say romance is dead. <laughs> but my favorite ad on the page just said, anything! Anything. Now that is a wonderful position to be in. To know you can rock up to somebody's house and say, here is the box of cottage cheese, here is my saxophone, where is that kitten? Because <laughs> when we pack this baby and you hit a high C, that cat has to go over the roof. <laughs> Otherwise we don't get to eat my shoes. <laughs> There's a wonderful directness about that. It'd be much better for straight people instead of all this, you know, G-S-O-H, I love country walks, nonsense. Just give it to people, say, come around, sit on my head and insult my furniture. <laughs> then we'll talk. Now, I, uh, homosexuality, of course, is not a big deal anymore. I remember when it was, you know, it's been adopted into the mainstream, very much so. It's at the heart of the mainstream, which is... Is, uh, is it can only be a good thing. I mean, the mainstream, you have to work kind of hard to be left out of the mainstream now, because it adopts a lot of people. You'll know, you live in London, you see everybody. Who are you? Ernesto, the sculptor from Chile with the built-up shoe and a stutter. Come on in. <laughs> What's your name? Gwyn, with no upper teeth. You're a performance artist, you make your own cheese, sometimes on purpose. Welcome. I'm, you know, I mean, I mean with, with sexual orientation, you know, if you're a man, some people have a sexual crisis in their 30s. How would you not know if you're gay as a man if you're in your 30s? It's very simple. If you get to your 30s and you still take a small size in trousers, you're a gay person. <laughs> All straight men are covered in excess fat. All of them. Because they're pregnant with unused desire and resentment. 
And so you see them hanging around barbecues, eating hamburgers they don't need, saying, she won't make love to me anymore. <laughs> Maybe it's because you're depressing and overweight. Shut up, you hate me as well. Everybody hates me. <laughs> There's a butterfly, grill us. And then <laughs> men express themselves through grilling. And the, we, should, we should stop talking for a bit. Because I have to, you, you, you rubbish at talking. I have to keep doing it. So go away and uh, have a have a bath or something, or give each other some squash, and I'll see you shortly. Thank you very much. Bye. Interval. Drinking, drink, yes, you see, yeah, I know, yes, yes. Drinking, mainly, is what you were doing. You know, that's a little disappointing. I made art. That's what I did. I can't help it. That's what I do, you know, all the time. I have to make art or I'll die. I'm like a shark in a beret. <laughs> I, uh, you know, the thing is, I'm, I, I'm, the truth is, look, I'm talking to you, you know, we're trying to relate to one another, but the truth is, I'm not like you. <laughs> I'm not like you, bourgeoisie, sitting there in your clothes. <laughs> you probably all live in houses or roof structures. That's the sign of a sellout. I live on the edge. I'm a very edgy person. I walk sideways. I don't have nipples. It's more aerodynamic. <laughs> I sneak up on myself and accuse myself of things. <laughs> Later on tonight, when you're all at home, in bed, in your flannels, talking about how great I am, <laughs> I'm going to go out and do what I do every time I hit a new town. I'm going to go out and buy up all the ham I can find. and leave it in a lift. <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying with that. Because the thing about modern art is, how do you know if it's any good? You get a representative piece of modern art, say a, a skull, with some Finder's crispy pancakes stuffed into the eye sockets. <laughs> how, how do you know if you should like it or not? It's all about the title. If it's called something pretentious, like the death of love, that's, it's bad art. If it's called something honest, like skull, with pancakes. That's bang on. That's perfect. <laughs> All men like to think they're cool. Oh, what's that? Is that the cake? It's a cake! It's a cake! Ha 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 good cake. Mm -hmm. The only disadvantage, the only drawback to this, and it is nitpicking to mention it, mm, is that this stuff is great when you're a kid. You know, you just, mm, it's very good. Instantly, uh, you eat this as a child, and you just convert it into extra miles to run. <laughs> when you've been around a while, you eat this, and you instantly convert it into extra pallbearers. Mm. Very good cake. <laughs>